Great. Welcome everyone. Um, let's see. So welcome to American Heritage Virtual Career Fair, uh, College Fair. Um, let me just share real quick the screen. Um, So uh, the biggest things for housekeeping today, my name is Anna, I'm from StriveScan. Um, the way you ask questions is through the Q&A function um, on your chat. Um, and just note that the for the folks who are chatting with us today, the different representatives, uh, they will be um, chatting with you, but they can necessarily not necessarily see you or hear you. Uh, feel free to sign up for more sessions um, through the way that you registered for this one, and a recording will be available to you following this session. So I'm just going to ask for um, all presenters to make sure that and that you are muted, and we're going to start with St. John's. My name is Randall Hollinsby. I'm from St. John's College. I've got uh, Armando Rodriguez with me. Uh, we are from St. John's College uh, in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. We have two campuses. Uh, I'd be happy to start this slideshow now. Let's see. Uh, St. John's is probably most famous for our great books program. Uh, we only have one major. I'm just gonna put this slide up so you can see it. Uh, I know that StriveScan is recording, so I'm not gonna bang on through that. St. John's College, uh, the Annapolis campus is halfway between DC and Maryland. The Santa Fe campus, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, the base of the Rockies. Uh, we are the third oldest college campus in the United States. Uh, like I said, we only have one program for all of our students, but because our campuses are on different parts of the country, uh, they have two different looks. That's Annapolis, that's Santa Fe. Uh, one of the great things about St. John's is we encourage you to transfer between our two campuses. Uh, start at one, go a year, head on to the next campus. Uh, $35,000 tuition. So St. John's is a good deal. We have excellent financial aid to help you cover that amount. We are a member of the Colleges That Change Lives group. Uh, and another thing that we're famous for is we are excellent at putting students in law school and med school. Um, in the last five years, 100% admissions rate to law school. Once again, our beautiful Annapolis campus our beautiful Santa Fe campus, a little something for you to look at in the recordings. And there's my information. Thank you. Thanks, Randall. Um, so we are going to now have UC Irvine share with us. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me this evening. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. My name is Michelle Burns, and I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for UC Irvine. I'm actually based on the East Coast, and normally this time of year, I would love to be visiting you all down in Florida, away from the cold temperatures that I'm uh, experiencing up here in Connecticut. Uh, so uh, just know that I'm on your time zone and always uh, available to reach out um, and connect with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. But today, I'm just going to spend a few seconds, a few minutes, telling you a little bit about UC Irvine. 
University of California, Irvine is part of the UC family. So we are down in Southern California. Um, within the UC family, there are, are nine undergraduate institutions within the UC uh, family, and we are down in the Southern part of the family. We're one of the younger ones. We were founded in 1965. Irvine's a beautiful location. I know you get to hear from some of my other California colleagues here today. Um, so we're about 45 minutes south of LA, an hour-ish north of San Diego, and just 10 minutes from Newport Beach. We get the ranking as the number one school for beach lovers um, because we have three other beaches within a 30 minute radius of us. So there's lots of wonderful things to do in Orange County and for students to get to experience um, while they're also studying and doing research. Uh, we're just about 25-ish minutes to Disneyland. Uh, we have our own boathouse down on Balboa Pier and lots of fun concerts and things like that to do. Outside of all the fun things, Irvine is also a great location because about one third of all Fortune 500 companies have some sort of offices or headquarters there. What that means for you as a student, that you have lots of great opportunities to be doing research, to have internships at some top names um, in the country, and um, be doing that while you're in school as well. So a little bit about our academics. We do have 14 different schools that we're broken down into. I won't list all the majors here, but you can go ahead and um, go on that website there to check out our variety of programs. So we have about 85 different majors. We are very well known for things like our health sciences, our engineering, our STEM-based fields, but we also have some top-ranked programs like a top-ranked dance program in the country, a top-ranked criminology, law, and society program, um, and really well-known psychology, um, some great humanities these programs as well. So whatever you're looking for, there's a great opportunity for you to have a good fit at UCI. One of the other things that we really want to focus on for our students is the ability to be interdisciplinary as well. We don't want to put you in a box. If you want to explore one that more than one major, that's fantastic. We see a lot of our students will go ahead and double major or major and then minor in something completely different. Um, what the great thing is, is in our setting on our campus, it's designed in our circle. And it was designed this way, like I said, we were built and designed in the 60s. Um, so the uh, university and the city of Irvine were all built at the same time, which means that for you, it's really easy to get around um, campus. So no matter what area of campus you're on and where you're living, you're gonna be able to get across campus really easily. And you're also going to see students from all the different schools. So you're gonna make friends in engineering, in humanities, in the social sciences, in the arts, no matter what major yet that you're in. We also require our faculty to go ahead and be interdisciplinary as well. So that means that some classes are team taught. We'll also see professors working together in research and giving students the opportunity to do that as well. And a little bit about some of our internships and project-based learning. So I mentioned that we're a research university. That means that all of our students have research opportunities, whether you're a dance major or a science major or a history major. But for some of our students, that means that they want to get more involved with hands-on opportunities. And so we do have that available for you um, through some of our project-based uh, programs, especially in things like engineering and computer science, where companies from Irvine are actually coming in and working with you as a student on a project that you're doing in class. So that gives you the great opportunity to get that hands-on experience while you're in class. Uh, another of my favorite things about UCI is our diversity. Um, we are committed to having a diverse student body, and we are not a predominantly white institution. Um, we're both an Anapisi and an HSI, a Hispanic serving institution as well. And one of my favorite things to see on campus is students sharing out um, the various um, cultures that they're part of in our cross-cultural centers and seeing, um, you know, festivals, um, food sharing out, and fun cultural arts events as well. Um, so it's really cool to get to come onto campus and see that. And we also want to make sure that you're supported no matter um, what your needs are on campus. So in addition to some of the services that you see here, we also have plenty of opportunities through our health services and counseling services as well. And then of course, you have to have some school spirit. Our mascot is Peter the Ant Eater, and our school spirit shines no matter what you're interested in doing. In addition to being a D1 school for sports. Uh, we're the Big West Conference. We also have some really cool things like a top esports program as well. So whether you're a basketball player or a League of Legends player, there's a good fit for you. And then opportunities to live on campus through first year housing and upper year housing as well. One last quick thing I'll say is that our application um, opens up in August and then our application period is November 1st through 30th. We are test free, so no worries about submitting a test to us. And the last thing I'll show is our slide here for you to 
to go ahead and take a picture of it. I'd love to get a chance to talk to you one on one. So go ahead and go to that out of state website. You can schedule an appointment with me or you can come to one of our longer weekly sessions or hear from our students as well. So thanks for much, so much for spending a few minutes of your time with me tonight. Great. Thanks, Michelle. And next up, we have Santa Clara. Thank you very much, Michelle. Appreciate that. Um, all right, folks. Well, thank you all for joining. This is uh, Lorenzo Gamboa from Santa Clara University. Excited to be here with you all this evening. I get to represent my alma mater. So the information you're going to hear from me in the next couple of minutes, extremely, extremely biased. So keep that in mind. Uh, Santa Clara University is the oldest university in the state of California. We've been around since 1851. So we do a lot of uh, really cool and exciting things, but what we're most excited about is that we do actually sit on the traditional homelands of the Ohlone Muecma people who trace their ancestry to the Dolores, Santa Clara, and San Jose missions. And currently the only university with an actual mission on its campus. So we actually do appreciate being able to work, live, and learn and pray on these ancestral traditional lands. So thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, Santa Clara is located right in the heart of Silicon Valley, right next to the city of San Jose, which is the 10th largest metropolitan city in the country, which means you have easy in and out access to airports like San Jose, Oakland, San Francisco, and be connected to anything in the Bay or around the world. Currently, 55% of our student body calls this um, campus home from the state of California. 45% of the student body comes from out of state. So it will be a very, very mixed, diverse pool. The only state not represented is Santa Clara right now, North Dakota. So if you know anybody for some reason, please get them to apply here. I need that 50th state. What does make it pretty unique is that we are right in the heart of Silicon Valley. So companies like Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, and Young, KBY, Pricewaterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts, NVIDIA, you name it, it's gonna be here. You can have access no matter what major you're interested in. You can do arts and science, you can do business, you can do engineering, and then be able to enjoy everything that the Bay Area has to offer you. Santa Clara is the oldest Jesuit institution out here. So what makes us a little bit different other than just you know giving you the traditional math, science and all that, is that we actually try to develop you spiritually as well. So in the foundings, yes, you were probably Catholic if you were attending here, but right now 50% of the student body says they're Catholic, 50% comes from every other denomination around the world. Most important key part to all of us is that we really care about how do you pay it forward, regardless of what is it that you're studying at Santa Clara. So you get an opportunity to explore and mingle and check out all different kinds of religions and opportunities, uh, but mostly get able to interact with the top of the line faculty. Currently 5,500 undergraduates with a goal to be 6,000 by 2025. Not a big campus, but also not a tiny campus. 11 one faculty student ratios, which gives us some really opportunities of really impressive retention rates and most importantly, graduation rates. Right now, almost 90% of our students will graduate in four years. The reason we don't uh, get over the 90 is my business, my engineers who mess it all up for me. Why? Because they get to stay on for one more year and get a master's or a bachelor's uh, combination, which is really nice for them um, and good reason for them to messing up our numbers. We will not have big classrooms in Santa Clara, average class about 23 to 24 students. So you'll be able to definitely get to know each and every one of your classmates. Yes, most importantly, your faculty will give you letters of recommendations to graduate programs if that's your interest. And then exploring the arts, getting creative, doing anything with state of the art facilities that Santa Clara has, or being able to do research in some of our maker labs and all those things from the moment you step on a campus, not when you're juniors or seniors like at other schools. Here, anybody who wants to get involved will be able to do that. As I always said, get involved with the arts and the creative side of your degrees as well. Other than the academics, we are 20 division one sports, 19 club sports and over 150 clubs and organizations. So we definitely need students who are really active. Uh, you know, I like to say bookworms, but also being able to go back, paint their face and get on ESPN every once in a while. So if that's you, check out this campus. Housing, ridiculously nice. Some of the best facilities. Uh, we used to have catering even to your rooms, which is crazy, which means that your freshman 15, your freshman 40, it will happen. Uh, one of our biggest things is I always tell students, get involved because you need to be able to enjoy the Bay Area, which has anything and everything that you can think of. Every culture, every language, every sports, everything that's out there, indoors, outdoors, you will have access to it 24-7 while studying at Santa Clara. 
We are currently on the common app. The only thing you need to tell me is whether you want to start an arts, business, or engineering. We are direct entry into those programs. This is a quick snapshot of what the profile of Centec Vada students currently looks like. We do give you an unweighted average GPA here that ranges because it depends on when you submit. Is it early? Is it regular? Um, all of these other variables. And then we do like to say that we are a holistic evaluation approach. So anything that you want to let me know, we will consider. We are test optional moving forward for Santa Clara. Your deadline is coming up November 1st for your early decision, early action, and January 7th is the last time to submit. Other than that, we do take transfer students who come into Santa Clara University as well, if that's an other option that you might want to consider moving forward. Uh, big things that are in everybody's mind, what's going to happen, especially with COVID? Well, right now we are excited to say that we are currently moving forward with trying to bring on students in the spring and definitely being fully enrolled by the fall. So if you are interested in more up-to-date details, check out this website and then stay connected with us. There's many ways of connecting virtually and letting us know how we can support your adventure to Santa Clara. Well, thank you very much. And I look forward to answering any other questions after. Great, thanks Lorenzo. Um, and next up we have Shamanat, University of Honolulu. Yeah, you said it correctly, thank you. <laughs> Aloha everyone, thank you for joining. I know it's evening for you, it's daytime for us, it's two o'clock. Um, my name is Kimiko Strayer, I'm the newest member of the admissions family at Shamanad University of Honolulu. I mainly work with, oh, actually I did not share my screen, did I? Uh, yes. Okie dokie. Oops. No. Present. Okay, here we go. Um, and so I mainly work with students coming from mainland, from states in the Midwest, East Coast, like you guys, uh, California, as well as the Big Island, and students from Oahu. Our beautiful little university is located in the heart of Honolulu in a neighborhood called Kaimuki. Um, we are about 20 minutes from Daniel Inoue International Airport and less than two miles away from the famous Waikiki Beach that I'm sure you've heard about. So you can take advantage of the city, the mountains, the beach, hiking, there's so much to do and it's easy to call home. In the neighborhood of Kaimuki, there are tons of local coffee shops, old school diners, um, farmer's markets, quirky little antique shops. And there's a saying here that we call keep it Kaimuki because definitely a unique little gem in Honolulu. Our university faces Waialai Avenue, and the strip of Waialai has a lot of our local favorites like Via Gelato, uh, Sprout, and Coffee Talk, and I can't wait for you to discover what yours will be. This is our university. Uh, we are located on a 65-acre hillside called Kale Pohaku. We are home to just under 1,100 undergraduate students coming from 14 different countries and territories and 40 different states. So it's a very diverse campus. We're actually the number five, uh, ranked number five for most diverse private university. And that's something we're very proud of because as soon as you step on campus, you'll feel that Ohana warm, welcoming um, kind of feel to it. As a small private liberal arts college, our, co our students receive a personalized education that prepares them for an ever-changing future. We do offer 25 majors through our traditional undergraduate and online uh, programs. And with our average class size of 18 to 24, it's easy for students to get that one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And that's really what we're known for is the 11 to one student to faculty ratio. And the professors are going to get to know you and you're going to get to know your professors as well. Um, and this makes the networking and internship opportunities for current students and alumni very accessible. So here are some of our majors. Um, so forensic science, environmental and interior design are very unique to us because no one else on island offers those programs. Other majors that are popular to Chaminade, definitely nursing, criminology and the sciences. But no matter which major you choose, you'll get the hands-on experience. And as a Catholic uh, Marianist and Native American, uh, sorry, Native Hawaiian serving institution, we focus on promoting social justice and peace. So each of these programs, no matter which one you choose, is going to have a service learning component to it. So when you graduate with your degree, you'll have a plethora of experience, internships, social service, um, or service learning kind of um, uh, activities as well. 
What's great is that all of our programs are direct entry and have a four year graduation guarantee, including our nursing program. So a lot of programs you have to go like pre-nursing and then apply again into the nursing program. Ours is direct entry. And for those of you still deciding not to worry, I was in the same boat. We do have a lot of general education courses. Hopefully one of them will spark your interest and you'll get to declare your major um, by your sophomore year. And so you have some time, there's no, no pressure. Um, you can change your major back and forth. We've had students change their major like four times in a week. So it's very easy to do. And I encourage you to take advantage of all the academic programs that we have. Now for the fun stuff. So we have amazing programs and support inside the classroom, but I cannot encourage you enough to get involved outside of the classroom because that's where the college experience happens. So through our Office of Student Leadership and Activities, we offer third, over 30 clubs and organizations that students can participate in. These include cultural programs like Samoan Club, Hawaiian Club, Korean Club, um, to academic programs that are more based on your major like accounting, chemistry, biology, um, criminology and criminal justice. And you don't have to be in that major, you can just go if you're interested. And we also have an adventure club, which is probably one of our most fun clubs. Um, last year, they went zip lining, surfing, diving. Um, so a lot of things to do, a lot of fun. And if you don't like any of the, the clubs we have on campus, you're welcome to start your own. And then the um, OSAL office will help you there. We are NCAA Division II for athletics, so we do compete in PacWest Conference. Um, and our campus ministry has numerous volunteer opportunities for students to participate in. And through our Office of Advising and Career Development, some students take advantage of our study abroad, study away, or semester at sea and still graduate in four years. And through our four-year graduation guarantee, basically it's our promise to you as the silver future silver sword. Um, it's our commitment to you, our pledge to you that you will graduate in four years. All you need to do is do well in your classes, meet with your advisors regularly. Um, and in the event that you graduate after four years, because there was a course that wasn't offered, Shamanad will actually take on that cost. We have three residential halls, Hale Pohakuki for Hall and Hale Lokalani. We also have one off campus, but these are the ones that are on campus. One of our most popular residential halls is Hale Lokalani for our first year students. They have a pool table, ping pong table. All of our residential halls come with on-site laundry and full-size kitchen. And the, the housing will range between 11,000 to 19,000, just depending on the floor plan that you choose. So if you do a single room versus share with three other people, that's all going to make the difference. And it also depends on your meal plan, um, how many meals you plan to eat per week. As, as you can see, um, a lot of our students do receive financial aid, 97% of them do. And through our amazing financial aid and scholarship programs, we're committed to making college affordable for students. Um, and so our tuition ranges from 26,000 if you're a non-nursing major and 33,000 if you're a nursing major. But again, 97% of our students receive some type of financial aid. Um, and the average amount is 17,000 or a little bit above that. So our merit scholarships are automatically awarded upon acceptance. It's not a separate application to fill out. And we do have Catholic and Native Hawaiian scholarships that you can apply for separately, which is an additional application process. And the last thing I'll leave you with is our admissions requirements. This is our general admission requirements and our nursing admission requirements um, for general for all, actually for all majors, we have gone test blind for fall 2021 and test optional for the other, the other years after that. And we do take a holistic um, admissions approach. So we're not only looking at your GPA, we're looking at what classes you've taken and tell us about yourself um, in your 250 word or less personal statement. With nursing, we do require that you have a 2.75 GPA or higher with a and complete chemistry, biology, algebra two with a C or higher and then two letters of recommendation. And here's the website to apply on the bottom there. Please join us for Silver Swords Preview Week. It's coming up on March 1st. And this is my contact. Feel free to take a picture. If you have any questions at all, please do email or call. Thank you guys. Great, thank you so much. And next up we have Chapman University. One second, sharing screen with you all. All right, 
hopefully you're able to see from there. Hi everyone, my name is Marie Burry Lowe. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admission at Chapman. I use she, her pronouns and I do work with all of our students that are coming from Florida. So thanks for joining. Um, much appreciated uh, spending some of your evening hours with each of us tonight. So to tell you a little bit about Chapman, we'll kind of do a little bit of an overview. I want to talk about academics. We'll certainly talk about some of the fun things that some of my colleagues have been mentioning on here too. And we'll talk about how to apply. So Chapman is one of the oldest and largest private institutions in the state of California. Um, we do have about 7,600 undergraduate students that currently attend the university. That's then going to break down into about 23 students on average in each of your classes. This certainly gives you an opportunity to really connect with your faculty members. So if you're the type of student that knows you want to be able to raise your hand in class, ask those extra questions, connect with others, that's definitely something you might wanna be looking at as you're narrowing down that college search. Chapman's located in the city of Orange, which is really in the heart and center of Orange County, California. Um, much like our UC Irvine, we are very, very close to each other. Um, we're about 45 minutes to an hour uh, south of Los Angeles. Of course, that depends on LA traffic, as that can be a little unpredictable. Um, and just about an, an hour north of San Diego. We're also about 12 minutes, 12 minutes from Disneyland. So if you know where Disneyland is on the map, that's usually my like go-to landmark um, that you'll be able to find us. We're about 20 minutes from the beaches and things too. And obviously this provides some fun opportunities for each of you, but this will also provide some professional opportunities that we'll talk about as well. We do have a variety of different states that are represented on our campus, 49 of them, and nearly 80 different countries that our students are coming from. So as you're sitting in that class on your first day of your first year, it's important to connect with that person that's sitting to either side of you and ask them their, where they're from and their background and getting to learn from different folks too. It's our commitment as an institution that we are constantly working at diversifying our campus and making it continually more inclusive. And so with that, that's something that I don't know that we'll ever say is just a, a completely th something that's done. Um, we will always be working on finding new ways to make sure that our students re really feeling supported while they're here. When it comes to the academics at Chapman, if you know that you like that hands-on experience, that's certainly something that we offer. There are nearly 10 different colleges, um, schools and colleges within the university that you can apply to. Everything from our um, health and behavioral sciences to our business school, to school of engineering, uh, our film school, our college of performing arts. There's so many things that are really in between and so much that you can apply to. With each of those schools, you don't necessarily have to apply to one directly. You can absolutely apply to Chapman undeclared and that's okay too. We have about 15% of students that come in each year as undeclared. So things to keep in mind, you don't need to absolutely know what that major is as you're thinking about it for next steps. With that, as you're coming into the university, we really have this great interdisciplinary approach. And so with that being said, you're going to come in and you might have a couple of classes that you're jumping into in your first semester of your first year that are specifically related to your course of study. You're going to have some of that liberal arts curriculum too. So those general education classes that really make sure that you're a good communicator, that you're um, an analytical thinker, that you're a problem solver, those things that are really going to carry you past your four years of your education. You'll have your English, math, science, social science, all of those types of classes, but then it's actually a requirement that Chapman students take something outside of their program as well. And so each of you might end up having a major and a minor. Some of you might decide to take on two majors. Some of you might decide to take on two minors, all different ways that you'll kind of pull these other pieces together, but just know that it is really interdisciplinary and that you'll be able to take classes across different schools and colleges. Of course, some of those courses will be restricted to some students that if they're a higher level course, but um, all good things to be thinking about as you go from there. We do have a quite a bit of um, students that do study abroad programs and things along those lines too. We have options that you might want to travel here within the United States. So within our business school, to give you an example, we have a course that's called a walk on Wall Street where students can go to New York, they're getting their hands dirty, they're meeting folks that are there on Wall Street. And we've had students that have, because of that particular program, ended up working at NASDAQ and had that be their first job after college graduation. So 
opportunities like that exist, as well as a DC semester program. If you're a student that is interested in peace studies, political science, something along those lines, that might be a great fit for you. Or maybe you're looking at doing a semester abroad in one particular location or through a study abroad program um, where you're doing like a semester at sea and going to multiple different places. So lots of different options there for you. When you think about some of the activities that you'll have on campus, we have nearly 200 different clubs and organizations that you'll be able to join. Everything from things that are the just for fun kind of things to you. If you wanna go surfing, you wanna get outside, you want to um, go and explore the local mountains, you like to um, video game or watch movies, anything along those lines, those definitely exist on our campus. We also have cultural and religious clubs and organizations, and we certainly have some that are related to your academic areas of study as well. We have a program that's um, for our entrepreneurs. We have programs that are for students that are interested in going on to dental school or going on to law school, other things along those lines that can really help you start to build that professional network, even amongst your student body and your classmates and um, helping each other navigate this process too. Of course, you'll certainly have your advisors that'll be there to assist you with all of these things as well. Um, with that smaller classroom size, you'll really be able to connect with your faculty members too. Chapman is a continually growing campus, so there's a lot that's going on here too. Um, I also want to mention our application process is incredibly holistic. We do have our November 1st deadline, which has both early action and um, early decision, and then regular decision is January 15th. I'll put my contact information in the chat, so you're welcome to connect with me there. But thanks for spending a little time with me tonight. I really appreciate it. And we'll pass on to the next institution. Great, thanks so much. Um, so now we have, last but not least, Stanford University. Hi, good afternoon. My name is James Marquez and I work at Stanford University. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I wish I could be there in person. I previously worked as an assistant principal uh, in East Palo Alto, very close. So I'm um, a shout out to all my other California people who are here. We are in Northern California as well in the Bay Area. Uh, we're also in the heart of Silicon Valley next to Santa Clara. Uh, we have San Francisco in the North as well and San Jose and Sierra Nevada mountains in the East and Pacific Ocean in the West. But we are also in Wekma Ohlone tribe land, it uh, continues to be unceded land and we pay utmost importance and respect to those folks um, who came before us. I would like to talk a little about predominantly when we have a typical year, uh, we do have a highly robust residential education uh, and virtually all students live on campus and it'll be a wide range of choices. Uh, you will have resources connected to your peer health, technology, uh, residential faculty, writing assistants, and even cooking classes if you're up for it. And yes, it is over 8,000 acres. Um, there is a running joke that there's more palm trees than students, so I urge you to count them or to check out the fruits and vegetables that grow on campus on the farm. So since our founding, we've been co-educational and we've been open to all people, just like Jane Stanford stated. Uh, we have students from uh, more than 70 countries. Uh, and we represent all 50 US states. We are proud of the fact that our most recent class, 19% of students will be the first uh, in their family to attend college. And we have about 12% of students that identify as, as international, coming from international locations. We support students regardless of their socioeconomic status. And through our generous financial aid, we are a needs-based financial aid. So it's not merit aid, but needs-based. Uh, we define diversity broadly, so it encompasses race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, where you grew up, political leaning, academic interests, career aspirations, political, religious faiths, life experiences. You'll want to engage with this community because you'll get to learn just as much from your peers as you will from your professors. You're also encouraged to get outside the classroom to learn in other contexts, and Stanford really makes it easy for you. So there's several Stanford operated programs, both in the United States and internationally, where you can study away for a quarter or a year, no matter your major and your financial aid will travel with you and your credits will come back with you. Additionally, through the Stanford Diversity Exchange with HBCUs, 
but you can also attend Howard University Morehouse College or Spelman College for a semester or the entire academic year. Stanford also has funding dedicated to help any student, including freshmen, engage in research, whether you work on a faculty member's project or ask them to advise you on one that you design yourself, you can conduct research in any discipline on campus or around the world that you would choose to. So we have a high division one, we have 36 currently division one teams and more than 30 club teams who compete against the other colleges as well as a variety of other intramural teams who compete recreationally on campus. Stanford is regularly named the most successful intercollegiate athletic department in the nation. But even if you aren't a division one or club athlete, you can still take full advantage of our more than 1 million square feet of gyms, pools, fields, and rock climbing walls. And you can cheer on your peers with readmission to all regular season competitions. It's also home, the farm, to many departmental programs in the arts, in our history, film and media studies, creative writing, theater and performance, dance and music, an array of student performance groups, as well as our Stanford Live program. Uh, which brings in visiting artists, makes the campus a rich environment, for both artists and audiences. Uh, we I do have a FAR submission, which is a fine arts uh, submission. Should you have a passion or a talent that you would like to show us and submission for that is earlier and it could be a part of your program. Note that you can participate in the arts and not have submitted something in your application. Um, you can submit a portfolio in your application and then not participate. Uh, you could see our Stanford band. I implore you to go check out our Stanford band and see the tree. I go to all the volleyball games here on campus and you can check out the band performing. Uh, even our president, MTL, does participate sometimes. You might be able to find a clip on that. The desire to work together to impact their community is a hallmark of a Stanford student. And our Haas Center for Public Service is the hub of the Cardinal Service, a university-wide endeavor to make service an essential feature of a Stanford education. And Haas provides many options for you to make a positive impact in our future. You can be dedicating yourself full-time to service for a quarter, uh, for a year, and they'll help you with internships. I wanted to add just a couple updates uh, right now. If your family is making less than $150,000 a year, or we are needs-based, the university uh, will continue their promise to cover tuition for those students, and that would uh, lead you to have room and board um, and living costs. Uh, we just recently changed this year to families making less than $75,000 a year with typical assets. Uh, not only would tuition be covered, but also room and board would be covered as well. And that was moved up from $65,000. Um, and lastly, we have a $0 student contribution for these times during COVID-19, noting um, all of the changes that are going on in folks' lives. And we are going to be accepting applications with or without SAT or ACT testing. And you can check us out on Engage Stanford. Great. Thanks, everyone. So I'm going to ask all the reps to be back on the screen with me um, and just turn your video on. Um, I'm going to pose one question because I think we only have enough time for one question. Um, so let me just share that real quick with all of you. And let's see. I'm not sharing it, am I? Nope. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna just pose the question orally because I think that just makes more sense right now. Um, so the question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, so hopefully folks have had a chance to think about that, but we're gonna go in the order that you presented in. If you could share your favorite um, event or tradition on campus, that would be great. At uh, St. John's, my favorite uh, event is, um our croquet match with Navy. We, uh, we are croquet champions of the civilized world. Uh, Navy's a, a, a mighty foe, uh, but we are 30 and seven when it comes to croquet. At 
UC Irvine, uh, one of my favorite traditions that we all have is that every year our student um, body tries to set a Guinness Book of World Records. So we have a record for the largest water balloon fight, um, the largest game of capture the flag, the largest pillow fight, um, just a few fun ones um, to name. So hopefully if you come to UCI, you can help us set a new tradition. Sorry guys, my video is not working right now, but uh, something that we started a, as a student when I was there is called the Colorado Native Challenge. Um, you wake up really early winter quarter and go ski Lake Tahoe, come back down, have dinner in San Francisco, come back down, have a bonfire in Santa Cruz, and the first person that falls asleep on the team, you baptize them in the Pacific Ocean. So go do it. Hello again, everyone. I'm actually very new. So what I'm most excited about, the tradition I'm most excited about is our international extravaganza. It's our kind of display of our diversity here on campus. And they have all kinds of really fun dances like um, the Hawaiian dance, the traditional Hawaiian dance and Samoan dance. And we eat a lot of food and have fun. And so that's what I'm most excited about. I believe I'm next. One of my most favorite events on campus um, because I'm a New Englander at heart and uh, love the snow in the Northeast. Um, we do have a um, big like holiday festival in the winter time. The Piazza is the very center gathering space of our campus and we'll have a big kind of like winter fest where they literally make it snow. Uh, in the Piazza you'll have hot cocoa and, and fun drinks and things and the chorus is singing. Um, it's a really kind of just festive event but uh, feels very winter in Southern California. One of my favorite traditions is the Gaieties at Stanford. And that looks like the week before the big game between Stanford and Cal, then a student written musical occurs and it's been going on since 1911. And so it's performed the week before the big game. Uh, it's just a huge celebration. Uh, students have written it and you get to hear these student performances. It's really pretty amazing. Awesome. Thanks for all the um, the presenters tonight. I know we had a little bit of technical difficulty with the videos not turning on and off, but thanks for being flexible. Um, and thank you for everyone who participated. I'm just going to share a quick screen uh, to close us out for the night. So um, as folks are, well, Things are, my computer's like malfunctioning right now. So that's cool. So we're just gonna stop sharing that. But as folks are ending this webinar, you will um, have an opportunity to fill out a survey. Um, so it'll be a quick four question survey. Feel free to fill that out. If you are able to join us for more webinars, please do sign up and do know that there will be a recording of this available to all of you. So thanks so much and have a good night. Bye everyone. <laughs>